Krishna Krishna Hare Hare Hari 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 Ki Jai, Shri Shri Dauji Gopal Ki Jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai, Gaur Premanande, Uma Jnana Timirandasya, Jnana Salakaya, Chakshur Miritam Yena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Adinulambita Bhujo Kanaka Vadatu, Sankirtanai Tapitaro Kamalaya Takso, Vishwambaro Dvijabaro, Yugadharma Palo, Vande Jagat Priyakaro Karunabhataro, Vande Shri Krishna Chaitanya Nityananda Sahodito Gururai Pushpavanto Chitro Sandhokamudo Vande Ham Shri Ramakrishna Abhaya Charano Sako Sukaro Paramanando Sundaro Subhala Priyo He Krishna Karuna Sindho Nina Vandu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radhanta Smushe Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavanishwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Anamami Hari Priye Shishidaji Gopalki Jai Krantara Sumat Bhagavatam Ki Jai Guru Vishnu Guru Parampara Ki Jai Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Gaur Premanande Welcome. Nice to see you. How long are you here for? Oh, good. Me too. So this morning we continue our discussion of the Brahma V. Mohan Lila. And um, we come now to the 13th chapter. So 12 and 13. These two chapters uh, are where we find the, the Lila narrative, which is, of course, then followed by chapter 14, which is Brahma's reflection upon it in the form of his uh, 30-some prayers to, uh, to Krishna. So here we find the Baba, the Rasa, and the Tattva that supports it through the prayers of Brahma yet to come. It doesn't look like we'll get through all those prayers. <laughs> uh, we'll see if we get through this, this, this chapter here. If we turn to this chapter, it picks up a little bit from where the, uh, obviously where the 13th, uh, or the 11th chapter left off, which was, as you may recall, uh, Prichit Maharaj's interest and inquiry has uh, um, sent Sukadeva into a trance as he reflects upon what he will have to speak about and how to speak about that uh, in order to reply to the earnestness, the eagerness, um, the inquiring spirit of Parikshit Maharaj, which causes him to um, understand the bomb, if you will, that that Sugadev dropped by saying, "And so this was uh, uh, the story was not told for a year later, when Krishna entered this Boganda Leela, uh, and at that time, as if it had just happened." And he, so basically, Parikshit Maharaj says, "Hold on a minute there." Don't speed ahead. Let's reflect on that a second. And, and uh, here we'll find that uh, as Sugadev comes to the fore, comes to external consciousness, as we mentioned, with the help of Narada's Kirtan, um, he, he's going to praise the inquiring spirit of his student, Sugadev. So, Sri Sukha Uvacha, Sadhu Prishtam Mahabhava, Tvaya Bhagavadottama, Yan Nutanas Yashishasya, not 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 shish asya srinvan apikatam muhu 
So, so Gumuni said that Sarupishtam Mahabhava Twaya Bhagavatottama hmm. refers to the Parikshit Maharaj, his student, as Bhagavat Uttam, the best of the Bhagavatas. Hmm. And I think, as we mentioned yesterday, there's a there's a history to uh, the life of Parikshit Marsh, which uh, points out uh, his, that he has a special status, uh, having been saved, if you will, in the womb by Vishnu himself, Krishna himself. And so that's played out well in the course of his life. He is indeed a Bhagavat Uttam, Uttam Bhagavat. And Sugadev says that you have very nicely um, been listening to the description of the Leelas and hearing those pastimes, you appear to be perceiving them uh, to be newer, newer, fresh at every moment. Hmm. He says, Sutam ayam sarabritam nisargo yad artavani shuti jeta somapi pratikchanam navyavad atutas jajat striya bitanam eva sadhu varta. Here in the second verse, he gives an example to help us appreciate the. Uh, Character, there is a, this, this, this quality of Sukadev that he's, excuse me, of Pritchett Mars that Sukadev is underscoring his uh, ability to find the narrative of Krishna's Leela, the Harikata, to be ever, ever fresh. Hmm? Whatever has been said, you're ready to hear again, and you're always ready to hear more. Hear the word used, Naviavad, as if new. There is a quality, um, and I should say it's a an intensification of the stayibhav. It falls under the category of stayibhav. We have the basic stayibhavs for shanta, dasya, sakya, and vatsalya. So shanta rati, dasya rati, sakya rati, vatsalya rati, madhurya rati. If these are matured hmm, through the culture of bhakti and bhava bhakti, they become shantarasa, dasya rasa. Sometimes rasa and rati are used synonymously, but in another sense, rati comes first, then rasa, rati turns into rasa. Rupa Goswami has explained it in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu in his chapter on bhava bhakti, where he says, that Shuddha Shatva Vishay Shatma Prema Suryamsu Samyabhak. The, the Baba or Rati, they're synonymous, is a ray of the sun of Prem. So if we churn the ray or follow the ray, it leads to the full light of the sun in the world of Rasananda. Rati is the way to enter there. And In that realm of Braj, in particular, we find that there is an intensification of Dasiras, Sakiras, Vatsaliras, and Maduras that are dominant there in, in, uh, in the form of Sneha, Man, Pranay, Rag, and Rag, Mahabhav. These words that I just uttered are. In, in categorized within the section of the stai bhav and they constitute, like I say, an intensification of it. So relative to whether it's dasya or sakya or vatsalya or madhurya, then that will, that bhav will intensify. Um, just like um, Abhi Rupa Goswami has given some of an example that if you take cane, sugar cane, and then you uh, it 
you turn it into um, more, boil it, turn it into molasses, so it can, can condense, become sweeter and, and sweeter, right? Rock candy is, is, the, is, I think, the final result in his um, analogy. Mm. Now we have, for better or worse, what's it called? White sugar, anyway. <laughs> um, so, uh, sweeter and sweeter and sweeter. So there's a sweetening of dasiras in braj and sakiras in braj and vatsaliras in braj up to what's called rag, sneha and rag. Now, these words, you can just define them in a sentence or two, but their uh, significance is thought really to be only something that can be understood by way of entering into firsthand association of those whose stahibhav has that measure of intensification and thus enables them to participate in the brajli. Thus, the emphasis coming originally from Rupa Goswami and Ujbal Nilmani of entering into the Prakat Leela after a successful life as, as a sadhaka, there having firsthand association with Krishna's associates where that intensification can take place, hmm? like as a kind of an osmosis or as a contagious, something like that. Difficult, difficult to um, arrive, if you will, at a realized understanding and experience of these stages otherwise, although Rupa Goswami has labored to explain them in Ujjbal Nilamani in particular, and uh, to some extent in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, there, there in the latter book, he's described uh, uh, Sneha and, uh, and Rag. Hmm? But Pranay, and also Pranay, hmm? which is uh, in, 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 in Dasya, in Vatsali, you have Sneha and Rag. In, in Sakya, you'll have Sneha, Pranay, and Rag. But then Anurag and Mahabhav, these are relative to Madhurya Rasa, which he doesn't go into in detail in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. The chapter on Dasiras, the chapter on Sakiras, the chapter on Vatsaliras, all three of these chapters are much longer hmm, than the chapter on Madhurya Rasa because he has given a sequel to that in the form of Ujjval Nilmani, which is a credit of a tome on that rasa in particular. Mm -hmm. So there you will find a description, an, an explanation, and then an example mm -hmm, from the Leela on Anurag and Mahabhav, for example, as well as the others. Um, it should be mentioned, of course, there that the Narma Sakas, whose Sakiras is like yogurt with a touch of the honey of Madhurya Ras, they can also they will also experience Anurag and Mahabhav. Now there are divisions within Mahabhav as well. So it gets complicated. But this is the, the these two, Rag and Mahabhav, these are Anurag, I should say, and Mahabhav, these are subjects of Ujmal Nilmani, among others. Worth noting, perhaps at this point, that some have argued that this idea that is prominent in Gaudiya Vaishnava of, of Manjari Bhav, or the idea of becoming a handmaid in the Varada, or this form of Madhurya Ras, Rupa Goswami calls Tad, uh, tad Bhav. Jiva Goswami refers to it as Tad Anumodana. Anumodana means sympathetic. Sympathy is. It's, it's synonymous uh, in respect with empathetic. So an empathetic, sympathetic uh, kind of love. So uh, there are two forms of that basically, sakshad and lesha. Sakshad means direct, lesha means like partial. Direct would mean experiencing the tad anumodan bhav within madhurya rasa. Mm -hmm. And there's a possibility of experiencing it in another rasa, a drop of it. Rupa Jiva Goswami says a particle of it. Mm -hmm. This we find, for example, in the Narma Sakas. That's that drop of honey in the yogurt of their Sakya Rasa, by which, or as a result of which, 
their uh, sakya bhav intensifies into into anurag and mahabhav. But the point I'm making as slightly as an aside, but it's an important point. Some have argued that uh, there in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, we don't find a very compelling emphasis on this tad anumodan bhav. Hmm? Tad, that means tad bhav means to attach oneself to the bhav of the leading lady. Hmm? Rather than trying to take the role of a leading lady, which perhaps would be a competitor, for example, with Radha, to serve her and assist her in bringing the two together. It's a peculiar type of uh, uh, romantic love in which the relationship of the, of, the, of the maiden, the Saki, in this case, it's called Saki Bhav, another name for it. And there are different forms of Saki Bhav. Hmm? But uh, Saki means friend. Hmm? So in contrast to Saki Bhav, there is um, another term uh, for Sambhog would be uh, Kantabhav. Sambhog means to have a direct romantic relationship with Krishna, like Radha does, like Chandrabali does. All right? So this is also called Kantabhav. Now, if you study Ujjwal Nilamani, you'll find that an argument could be made that an emphasis is given here more on Kantabhav than on Anjaribhav or Sakibhav. But, the, but you Gaudiyas at the same time say that the, the Sakibhav is the, is the best ideal. Indeed, Rupa Goswami, when he cites the two types of Madhurya Rasa in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu in that chapter on Madhurya Rasa, he says, and this is Tadbhav, this Anumodan Bhav, this Sakibhav, is preferable. This is preferable. Now, the math, if you will, to that idea, the logic to it, of course, is that no one can um, more intimately experience the rasa with Krishna than Radha. She is Mahabhav Swarupini. He's Rasa Rasa, she's Mahabhav. Everything else falls short of the fullness of her experience with regard to intimacy with Krishna, right? So to pursue Kantabhav, you will not get as close, the math is, to the Radha's experience than if you serve Radha and try to assist her in uh, her romantic uh, affairs and plight, if you will. Uh, effort to, to rendezvous with Krishna in Parakya. And because by assisting her and with such intense uh, identification with her plight and her service, then uh, her experience will be kind of indirectly uh, experienced by the handmaiden. It's so, the identification is so intense. We have an example that perhaps uh, to, uh, if we draw upon it, it can help us appreciate the idea. In Catholicism, there are some saints who, I mean, I might have mentioned this the other day, they experience stigmatica, is it called? Stigmata. 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 Mm -hmm. So they, they so much have, have meditated upon the the, the sacrifice, if you will, of Jesus of Nazareth on the cross, that the wounds of Jesus appear on their, their own bodies. So, on the one hand, the Gaudias are emphasizing that here's this whole book about uh, Madhurya Rasa, and it, it would appear that the emphasis is on Kantabhav. So, how to resolve that? Well, of course, the point is this. If you want to experience the Manjari Bab, well, you have to know what Kanta Bab is because Radha is a Kanta. She has Kanta Bab. So if you're going to assist her, you have to know all about her different moods and so on and so forth. Now, that said, of course, we have to also appreciate the fact that as uh, Sadvi pointed out the other day, 
Rupa Goswami is presiding, if you will, amongst our acharyas over Abhideya Tattva. Abhideya Tattva means the way. Therefore, his book Bhakti is about the way, the means. In, some, in, in Sanatana's writings, you're going to find more of an emphasis on Sambandha, for example, in, in uh, uh, Bhakti Brihat Bhagavatamrita. Hmm? Rupa Goswami is not dealing with what's what, and, uh, how the jiva is related to the Maya Shakti or not, or the Sarup Shakti, and so on and so on. All these things are found in uh, Priyad Bhagavatamrita. Now, who's the third? Because there's a Prayojan also, right? You get the Sambandha. That's a, like, I like to think of it as a conceptual orientation that will foster a certain type of action. If the conceptual orientation is the Sambandha, uh, the, uh, that kind of knowledge about the nature of Bhagawan, hmm? um, knowledge about uh, the, his shaktis, their relationship to them, and so forth, then that's going to foster the activity of bhakti, which is going to have a fruit, a result. We call it the prayojan. So, who amongst the Goswamis presides then over the prayojan tapa? Well, that is Raghunath Das Goswami. Hmm? And in his works, there we find clearly an emphasis with no, 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 uh, no doubt, no uncertain terms on the Manjari Bhav as he writes about his own meditations mm -hmm. and uh, extols the virtues overtly of this uh, ideal. Mm -hmm. So just a few important points to for you to consider uh, as we speak about uh, here anurag so anurag is uh, is something that comes up again in, in ujjval nirmani relative to to madhurya rasa and to uh, the baba of the narmasakas as well that in mahabhav and what anurag is then if we can try to define it which would be limited it's the experience that Krishna is new and ever fresh every time you see him. Now, here, this idea of Anurag is mentioned in relation to Parikshit, who, according to Rupa Goswami's explanation in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, would not be something that Parikshit Maharaj would experience being a Dasya Bhakta of Dwarka in the Leela. But he has a keen interest here in the Braj Leela. So it's something like Anurag. And we can, I think, expand the concept of Anurag a little bit to be something that largely does pervade the whole of Braj. Hmm. I mean, after all, the Leelas are going on day after day. The same things are happening. And Mother Yasoda keeps asking the same questions. <laughs> keep, keep saying, why, why don't you take shoes? You have to take shoes with you. Now you're going out. Mom, I told you yesterday. Why? He doesn't say that. He gives more reasons why. And the next day she's asking to take shoes. Hmm. And so on. Hmm. So it, it, Rupa Goswami hasn't addressed this, but it does seem to pervade the entirety of the Leela to one extent or another. Hmm? But it's particularly identified, as I say, with Madhurya Ras and, 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 and the, the Narmasakas. And some examples of it are given perhaps a more refined and specific definition, but in a broader sense, hmm? well, Krishna's pastimes are new and fresh and here, uh, the Parikshit Maharaj, the inquirer, exhibits that taste for them. He's never tired of them. They're fresh in that sense. So it's a kind of sim similar to, to Anurag in that sense, it, it, in terms of the, the, the technical definition of Anurag. Hmm. The idea, of course, I should mention of going to participating in the, in the Prakat Leela to have hands on association with the Nitya Siddhas and fully develop then the, the, the praying that is, uh, um, has been born, if you will, 
through the course of your your your, your life of sadhana. Um, there's an example I've given before. I find it useful that 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 it's said in sports that the professional leagues play at a faster pace than the college teams. And the best of the college teams get chosen to go on to the professional teams. And when they go on, they get the uniform and the number, and then they tend to sit on the bench and watch the, you know, the, the, the professionals and participate a little bit. And they go, whoa, this is going a little faster here. After all, these guys are, I was the best in my team, but these are all the best from all the teams. So it's, it's at another level. So the Prakat Leela is going at another level in terms of its full expression of itself than you could even catch up to by meditating on it, hearing about it, meditating on it, and so forth. So then you enter there, and the only way that they can keep up the speed is to get out there and try it out, and, and, uh, and in that association, then they, they get up to speed, so to speak. So this is the idea. Of course, that I've also said that it's possible. We do see exceptions to this. We see that Gopakumar in Brihad Bhagavatamrita, he describes his, his own journey to his student, Jana Sharma, such that he went from Braj, where he was living, not during the Prakat Lila, but meditating on it. He went there directly to Goloka. So somehow he was able to achieve that type of intensification. Sanatan left that part out. So we could say there's an exception, perhaps, but this is thought to be the rule in general. Of course, some people may have a hard time relating to the idea of the Prakat Lila overall because of historical ways of looking at history in the modern world don't give a lot of room for it. Hmm? That's, that's a whole other discussion and argument, but Prakat Lila in another sense is what we find in Srimad Bhagavatam. We can say it is the Prakat Lila because it is whatever was happening in Krishna's presence as reflected upon by Vyas in Samadhi. That's what he wrote about. So there it is. So Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. An argument could be made hmm? that you could acquire that intensification through entering into the Bhagavatam itself. Hmm? But at any rate, um, here Parikshit Maharaj shows some notable on the part of Sugadev eagerness. He's already done it at the end of the 11th chapter, as we heard, tell me more, don't, don't stop the story here. Now he's saying it again, of course, Sugadev gave him a window to do that by saying that this wonderful, extraordinary event of, this, of the liberation of Agasura was told a year later by the boys as if it happened that day. How could they keep it inside? How could they, how could they hold on to that for a year? So Pritchett Marjorie wants to know, and his eagerness to know is appreciated very much by Sugadev. As he's come out of his trance, he's going to go on with the story and try to tell it. And, uh, and in the context of glorifying his student, praising a student, for his uh, devotion, his eagerness, and um, his taste, which has a way of, uh, through which he perceives the leelas to be ever fresh. Again, he's fasting from food and drink. This is, he's living on these, these leelas. We know that already, but here it's being emphasized. And Sukadev gives an example. He says, your taste for this is something like the taste for people of the world some people of the world have for, uh, men have for discussing women. It's a big thing. I guess women have it for discussing men, you know, but that's what makes the world uh, some, of some star in a literal sense go round, right? Pum sastrio, pum mitpani bhavometor. Pum sastria, the unification of these two that is the shackles that bind us to material life. It keeps it going, samsara. So there's this, this natural, spontaneous attraction. It never seems to end. They're always ready to explore it in a new way, uh, even though it's really the same thing over and over again. Hmm? Prabhupada used to say, well, 
A prostitute has one thing to offer her client, but she just dresses in a different way every day. And he thinks, if I unbutton that button, it'll be fresh and new. Uh, but after he's through, he thinks it was the same old thing. She thinks the same thing. It's just not what it's made out to be. Hmm? It's not what it's made out to be. Therefore, Jiva Goswami says, well, yeah, there is real rasa in the material world, but it's vibhatsa. Hmm? Vibhatsa means the rasa of disgust. Hmm? It all culminates in it wasn't what it sounded like, what I thought it, what it, my mind made it out to be, whatever it is. Hmm. It didn't last, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. I went to the party, it was all, and then it was over, and uh, what do I do now? Hmm. So spiritual life is not like that, and that's the point that's being made here. It's ever fresh, hmm. ever fresh and new. Now, when we have material consciousness and we hear this, we can't quite draw that out. We might become bored reading about the past names of Krishna. Therefore, we need good company hmm, to draw out all the implications and so forth and hear from someone who has some feeling for that. And then we, we get that, that can be contagious. Hmm? And uh, we, we can get an understanding through theory, how it works and what are the parts and so on. It's like if you were to study drama, you might get more out of a movie than someone just watching a movie. He said, did you see how he put that pot over there at that time? That was far out. You know, what are you talking about? That's what it meant, you know, and so forth. So something like that. <laughs> so Raj Parikshit Maharaj Ki Jai, Sukadeva Goswami Ki Jai. So having said that, he says, Srinu, uh, Srinu, uh, Vahito, Shinu, Shinus va Bohito Rajan, Apikuyam, Badamite, Gruyus, Dig Desishishya, Guru, Huyam Aputa. Again to the king, he says in verse three, kindly hear from me with attention. Although the activities of Krishna are very confidential, and, and as a result, no ordinary person can understand them, I shall speak to you. Um, because it's incumbent, is what he wants to say, upon the guru to reveal, not hold anything back from the disciple who has the measure of interest that you have. Now, if you don't have the measure of interest, then he or she is going to hold back. And, and um, this is not the case with Parikshit Maharaj. He is like devouring every bite, digesting it, and eager eager for more. So in this situation, this is a, we have the ideal situation, Guru Shisha, and, and the result is the Bhagavatam. So it's, it's, it's a magical uh, arrangement in chemistry, what will come of that. Mix a, a hydrogen and oxygen, H2O, you're going to get water. You, may, you mix the Maha, two Mahabhagwats in the form of Guru and Shisha, you're going to get Srimad Bhagavatam. It's quite an ordin extraordinary um, result. And this is the potential, of course, then for all of us, right? Uh, and so, again, he praises the cycle and says, I, you know, I, I was going to hold this back. It's complicated, and, um, but you're, you're bringing it out, and it's my duty to, to explain it to you. So here we go. And many, many layers to this, as we say, because Brahma has come in, and that point has not yet Develop, but it is the Brahma of the Mohan Leela. So Krishna's coming, Brahma's coming, and Krishna's actually calling him. His omniscience is calling him in. It's your time to come now and become acquainted with all that Sakyaras is about. And that's bewildering him. So, as I said earlier, this is another way in which you can say Brahma's Vimohan, very bewildered with, wow, it's deep. I didn't realize it. <laughs> like that. Hmm? Uh, so, uh, so he continues there for anybody, the Lila narrative, Sugadev, he says, Tata Gavadanam Murtyo Prakshitva Vastupalakam Sarit Pulinam Aniya Bhagavan Idam Abhavit. So now from this verse 4 to 11, there is a beautiful and poetic description of, excuse me, of the picnic, right? That's what we started. Krishna decided to have a picnic and stay out all day, right? So he rose early with excitement, 
blew his horn, everyone came. Balaram was preoccupied with parental affection, couldn't come and thought, what's going to happen out there <laughs> in his mind? Hmm? And, uh, and, and, and off they went into, into the forest. This is a big day because they're not coming back for lunch. They're, out of, they're going to go out of reach, hmm? uh, parental uh, overreach, uh, if you will. And their adventures are going to only intensify, which we see in the case of Agasur. I mean, they saw Vatsasur, they saw Bakasur, they saw Krishna deal with them, but those two monsters didn't bring themselves personally into danger. Agasur, well, he wanted to swallow all of them. So implications, they're further into the forest, they're further into this, this Leela now, where one of the one of the Symptoms of which you could say is, well, it, it's the fullest expression of Rakshikshatigishvashvo, an aspect of Sharanagati. They, Krishna is our protector. They have extraordinary circumstances to uh, draw upon that. Krishna is our protector. And they're convinced already, seeing him twice now, they, they just went into the mouth of Agasura, right? So, so uh, that said, of course, Agasura appeared on the scene, as I explained, by the arrangement of the uh, Leela Shakti to distract them, one way of looking at it, from their playing, which was so consuming that they forgot about eating, and they had gone for that purpose. Well, it was part of it, to have a picnic. Mm -hmm. right. So when they started to play, then they put the, their, their uh, lunch bags, and sacks, and hung them from trees and so forth. Mm -hmm. When they came out of Agasura, then it was really clearly time to eat. Wow, that, that was a big distraction taking us down from our playing. Uh, we saw the heroism of Krishna. We saw the liberation of, of uh, Agasura. And so you could say, there's nothing they don't know about. They're just simple coward boys, but they know about Sarupi Mukti. <laughs> what are the possibilities of that? They like the Gopikas and all, they underlying their bhava and their simple, cowherd, innocent, almost ignorant leelas. This is the end of all knowledge. Therefore, as I say, when they come to this world where there's a need of, there's no need of knowledge there, it gets in the way. Here, there's a need for knowledge. So those simple boys and girls, they, they exhibit it. Pujapad Sridharmarsh once gave an example of this. He said that in the United States, he referred to at that time, you have this most powerful military industrial complex, but the way it's set up is that all that military power is hidden away somewhere. You don't see shot the machine guns and tanks parading through the streets in the United States. Now, if you go even to Europe, some airports, they got guys with machine guns. You won't find that in the United States, a guy with a machine gun as you come in, you know, to, or you don't find parades uh, typically uh, with uh, demonstrating how many missiles we've got, how many tanks we've got. This is prominent in the Soviet Union, for example, when the Cold War was going on between East and West. Hmm. That East and West, near East, I guess you would call it, uh, or just East of the Soviet Union and the rest of Europe. So, Shaputapai Tridharmarsh's point was that when you bring out all the weapons and everything like that, it's a little inhibiting. Hmm? But if, 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 if their power is hidden, hmm, then the play can go on uninhibited. Hmm? So you can come to the United States and, and you, might go to, you might go to Russia and you find all these whatever, or North Korea and there's parades and celebrations with missiles and tanks and everything like that. And everybody's celebrating, you might think, wow, they're pretty powerful. Come to the United States, you don't see those things. So they, and that power may not be here, but that power is there. It underlies the freedoms th that we find in terms of human interaction and so forth that we don't find comparatively in North Korea. Hmm? Similarly, in Baikunta, well, there's a lot of power and opulence, hmm? but we don't find the same Lila Maduria, that kind of play. Hmm? Sweet play, charming play, hmm? all play, 
Yeah, yes, Narayan has Leelas, but hmm, not like Krishna's. Hmm? Krishna, as I mentioned to Zach the other day in answering this question, only plays. Narayan, well, uh, he's kind of relaxed. <laughs> he doesn't have anything to accomplish, but he's very clear. He's got people there who have come by bhakti mixed with karma. So the sensibility of karma, the power of that, hmm? that, that system is, 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 is more overt, if, if you will. Hmm? There's Shantaras bhaktas there, meditation hmm? eternally. It's weird. <laughs> so the point is that the power, the power is overtly more present and it is inhibiting the kind of freedom of play that we find in Goloka, hmm? which is totally uninhibited. But it's there because there is power. That's the, by that we know there is power. That's why I say the Madhurya is ultimately the fullest expression of Aishvarya. Hmm. That sweetness hmm, means power. Hmm. If you want to play, you have to have some power. Hmm. They have it. Now, again, as Sridhar said, if they, those gopas and gopis would come to this world, in Sadakavesh, in the Sadhana Siddha, what is it? Sadhana Siddha, Sadaka Siddha Bhumi. That's Navadweep. Hmm? It is a land, Bhumi, where Sadakas, Siddhas, excuse me, are in a Leela in which the role they play is Sadakas. Perfect devotees are in a Leela in which they're playing the role of practitioners. Hmm? And by that example, we have such, uh, we're blessed. Hmm? And they play the role pretty well. Therefore, they don't even know their siddhas. Hmm? They say things as if they're sadhakas. We say, how can you say that? He's a siddha. Hmm? This is how. Hmm? That is yoga maya. That is, that is lila. Hmm? But in that lila, as sadhakas, in a world of ignorance, where ignorance presides, and there's no real play, it's only work. You escape the suffering for a moment. You, you just get relief from the, from the suffering for a moment, and you call it pleasure. It's not the standard of pleasure in, 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 in Krishna consciousness. Just some relief for a moment, and then it starts to build up again. And oh, so anxiety pervades. How will I appear? What will people think of me? What will I say? What did I say? What did people think of me? At a social level or just on a practical level, how I will provide for myself, for my family, uh, so on and so forth. It's a struggle. It's very Darwinian in that sense. Uh, Bhagavatam says, what is that verse? Jivo jiva sijivanam. One living being is food for another. So you constantly have to have a look over your shoulder. This is ignorance. So the power of knowledge is not even there to free you from that. What to speak of it, be retiring so that you can play. Hmm? Subor becoming subordinate to, to you, to your, to your love. Love is movement, free movement. So when the Goswamis, when the Manjaris come here, when the gopas come here, well, then we know something about the Braj Lila that's not apparent just by, just by reading it for the first time. These gopis have all knowledge. Nana Shastra Vicharanekanapuno Saddharma Samstapako Lokanam. They had a compassion for all the people of the world thinking themselves as, as one of them in that leela, compassion for all of them. And so they drew from all the sacred texts, the knowledge that they had just like mind boggling, staggering for the sake of the people to, and give an emphasis like Vyas was, was told by Nara to do, give an emphasis on Bhakti, which he did in the Bhagavatam. They took the Bhagavatam and churned it, churned it, churned it. What knowledge is there? Hmm. 
So they showed such power, hmm? such Aishvarya. Hmm? Gyan Aishvarya. This is one of the, um, what are they called? Sad Aishvarya. Hmm? Opulences, knowledge. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu showed this, his childhood, as Nimai Pandit, and then he retired it. Hmm? Became a Vaishnava. And then he became a sannyasi and again showed it. <laughs> his vairagya, his detachment, that corresponded with his knowledge. If you know, if you have real knowledge, then you're not going to pursue enduring happiness in relation to things that don't endure. That's a recipe for, for failure. That's ignorance. So he had the corresponding vairagya, very extreme. This is a, this is a manifestation of some of the opulences of Bhagwan, which distanced his devotees a little bit from him and his auntie Leela and his Madhya Leela. Hmm? It's caused some distance, but it's bringing us closer. Sriman Mahaprabhu ki jai. jai. Sri Krishna Chaitanya ki jai. jai. Hmm? Therefore, Bhagavatam says, what is that verse? Chaktva sudhus chadhuripta raj lakshmi. Dhanamishtari avatasa yaragad aranyam mayam idam this is Kali Yuga Avatar, Kali Yuga Pavana, Suman Mahaprabhu. He took sannyas and entered the forest. It means that forest means he took sannyas for the sake of the people who are bewildered by Maya. And he set an example how to enter into the sweetness of Navadvip, how to enter into my Kirtan of Shiva Sangam and experience Rajbhav through Kirtan Rasa. That was a private affair. So he opened the doors, he distanced himself from his associates and brought himself closer to us. And associates there, well, they had to, Acquiesce to that. Vishnu Priya, okay, I did acquiesce. Yes, let it be. Hmm. Sachi, well, at least if he could stay in Puri, <laughs> something <laughs> she negotiated. Hmm. And there, the Puri Leela's there. From there, and that Sanyasi, the, the, the teachings to Sanatana, teachings to Rupa Goswami as the presenter in. in um, the narrative of Chaitanya Charge, the conversion of Sarvabhoma, Prakasananda, Venkata Bhatta, and so on and so forth. All, all the, this is, brings us close. This is the center of the Chaitanya Charge. It's, it's Madhya Leela. And that public life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu drew him to the private life. It drew him, drew him within. And he couldn't come out. We are supposed to follow that. This is the idea, right? Now we got all into all those. So they, yeah, so gopas, gopis, they have knowledge. When they come here, it's apparent. What was an knowledge we talked about the other day, Udra and Tatakur, and of the six Goswamis, you know, just incredible. But if we don't, Follow that. You think, oh, they're just village girls. They don't know the Upanarad comes to educate them. Uddhava came to get educate the gopis. He was had a message he sent by Krishna. He understood the message in a particular way. He's Shastra Vit. This is Uddhava. He knew all this Shastra. He was Krishna's advisor, uh, Brahmin advisor, if you will, on uh, in, in Dwarka. So Krishna gave him a message to bring to the, to the gopis. He, he obviously thought he understood it. He revealed it to them. And then when he did, they wrote, they spoke it back to me. So I think this is what it means, right? This is what you're trying to say? And his mind exploded. Hmm? Seeing their understanding of what Krishna had written to them. Hmm? And then he wandered around for a couple of months in Braj, singing poems. Shruti Bir Bimbrigyam. This place is off the Shruti map. It's beyond the Upanishads, this place. Hmm? I wish... My bhakti in Dasi Bhav, tinged as it is with Sankh, it could be intensified hmm, to the extent that the, the I see the, the, the how intense is their their bhava. I'd 
to, if I could be born as a, as a weed here, <laughs> a weed, and they might step on me, it would be my good, good fortune. That kind of intensity would come into my, my bhav. Mm -hmm. So such a special place, place is uh, Brudge. Mm -hmm. And how we ended up in all this. So. They forgot about the lamps because they were absorbed in play. And you connected that with how. They, they forgot was. about what? They forgot about having lamps because they were so absorbed in playing the robots. So absorbed in playing. So rich, so deep was the play. So far mm -hmm. gone they were. The big monster had to come to bring them out. Leila Shakti determined. Ivasura. And then, so now it's time for lunch. It's now, okay. So that's what was like, what they were all excited about to start with. Obviously, there are many other exciting features of their uh, cow herding and friendly interactions, fraternal love with Krishna. And so a description then from verse 4 to 11 of the, uh, the picnic. Krishna suggested, here, look, here is a beautiful place along the banks of the Jamuna. There is sand hmm, where we can run and play and kick and fight and so forth. Hmm. Uh, uh, it's, it's soft. And there's also the shade of some big trees here so we can be sheltered from the heat of the sun. Hmm. And in the, in the Jamuna, there are some lotus growing. You boys can go and get the petals and make plates out of them or other plates depending on what you, what's in your bag, hmm? how you may need a cups too, <laughs> and other receptacles. Use your artistic talents and abilities, hmm? they suggested to them. And so they did. Hmm? There, they, there they settled. Hmm? First, they, 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 they gathered, as he said, lotus leaves, bark from trees, and very, each one of them very artistically created different types of plates to looking in their bag, what mother had packed them and how they were. So it's a huge, wonderful affair that, uh, that, that depicts their, um, their, their, their reducta, their, their artistry, their cultured, refined uh, uh, sensibilities out of nothing, in fact, just from the forest. They made an arrangement. It's like we saw, uh, Yesterday, we, we had lunch from Mexico, cooked by um, Merlidar, and it was very tasteful, very artfully presented, right? Everything very nicely arranged, beautiful. So you can find, in you know, if you go to the cuisine college and learn to be a cook, and uh, how to present it with different colors and make it appealing also to the vision. And so, so, that, so that it's, it's something that the, the eating becomes an affair also of the eyes, maybe of the ears, how it sounds. That's how it works for Madhu Mungo. <laughs> All of my senses are activated by this, by this Mahaprasad, every single one of them. Mm -hmm. And to capture all the senses means to capture the mind and be absorbed. Therefore, this food is rasa itself. That's his opinion. Hmm? Actually, in in in, in uh, Bhakti Sandarbha, Jiva Goswami gives a reference from reference from I think like Hayagriva Tantra or something like that, where it's explained that the food in Goloka is itself rasa. Hmm? Uh, Madhu gives a good dissertation on that. Hmm? It's an extension of the whole rasa. So. So here are these boys, they, they have nothing. They don't look like no certificate of uh, the, in the art of cooking, but and out of nothing goes from the forest. They made an arrangement of plates and just the, the receptacles and what speak of what was in their bag and so forth that they took out from their lunch bag. And you could just try to, just trying to give some idea. What was the scene there? Hmm? And this is what Brahma is going to see this, and it'd be absolutely startled, right? And they arranged themselves. Let's see what the text says here. It says uh, that what uh, Krishna suggests the place, and and Krishna uh, Shivishpak Pururaji Mandalayar. Pururaji Mandalayar means that they uh, arrange themselves in concentric circles, hmm? like a flower itself. Hmm? 
that has larger petals and smaller petals and out in, in something like that in concentric circles around round rows and rows and rows and there's lots of boys right lots of boys uh, they arrange themselves like this and and like the world Prabhupada describes it like the whirl of the lotus surrounded by its petals and leaves krishna sat in the center encircled by lines of his friends means concentric lines hmm? whose Prabhupada says, who, who all looked very beautiful who's full of the show their eyes flowered hmm? their eye means their eyes blossomed like lotuses hmm? in the anticipation, looking at the beauty of Krishna hmm? and the whole event, hmm? their eyes blossomed like flowers and they blossomed also like flowers because what? Each one of them, as they sat to eat, experienced the first expression of Aishvarya in this Leela out of the praying, well, the killing of Bhagasur was Aishvarya too, I should say the second one. This is Aishvarya out of praying for the coward boys themselves. Krishna's praying for them hmm, caused him to expand himself invisible to every one of them, such that each one of them thought that Krishna chose to sit in front of me. Hmm, he's just directly across from me. This is referred to in by Krishna's Kabarash Goswami and Chaitanya Charitamrita. In the Veda Kirtan pastime uh, chapter of Madhilila, Jagannath Puri, the Kirtan of Mahaprabhu on one day was explained. Coming out of the temple, they he divided his uh, devotees into four groups hmm, who did Kirtan. In each group, there was two, two murdangas and eight cymbals. So two, four, six, eight, eight drums and 32 cartels between the four groups. He appointed a dancer for each group. And this way they did send kirtan and people were coming from, from all over to see this kirtan. Again, this was a new thing that he brought to Puri, as I said before. Chaitanya Shishti, Prem San Kirtan. This uh, was a, was it Gopinath who, who described it like this to Sarvabhoma, to, uh, excuse me, to Maharaj Prachapur, who had never seen this kind of worship, although he'd seen every other kind of worship, because all kinds of people worship Jagannath, but this Prem Sankirtan, what is it? He said, Chaitanya, it's the creation of Chaitanya. Hmm? Bhagavatam itself has said, Tadvag Visargo Janatagabhagavagal. That's another creation unto itself. This is the Chaitanya Shishti. So here in, people were coming and just, just looking wide-eyed, like these boys are looking wide-eyed. And then the Kirtanir's eyes became even wider because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed a miracle. What was that miracle? He showed some Aishvarya by expanding himself into each of the four groups. This was not during the Ratha Yatra. That's another thing. They had seven groups then. I think he did it then too, but here, four groups. And he was in each group, and each group thought he's in our group, and each devotee dancing in each group thought, and he's looking right at me now. Hmm? And sometimes the dancing got close, and if one dancer got close to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he would embrace him. Hmm? And they all got close. He embraced everyone. Each one thought, he's looking right at me, he's embracing me. And he was embracing all of them, looking at all of them at the same time. And Krishna's Kabbalah Rashi Goswami says, this is wonderful. It is like Krishna sitting along the banks of the Jamuna with his friends in concentric circles, like a lotus, hmm? taking their lunch, lunch. And each one feels that Krishna is sitting in front of me, looking at me. Each one thinks Krishna loves me the most. And each one is right. Hmm? So this is the scene now, in brief, that Brahma is zooming in on here, coming in on his swan carrier, 
with this big intelligence, right? Four heads, swan representing intelligence. Also, as we explained the other day, we come, I'll skip ahead, but because the description is just, uh, well, I've already given it <clears throat> to the 11th verse. And this is, a, this is then the end of this section. And it's a very important verse. It's a long verse. The key part here is the last line. What would you be Jagnabug Balakeli? Would you be Jagnabug Balakeli? Balakeli means playing like a boy. Hmm? Kaili, to play, Bala, like a boy. Hmm? Who is doing that? Yagibuk. Who is Yagibuk? He is the Mahapurusha. Hmm? This is another name for the Mahapurusha. Mahapurusha is that form of a Bhagwan who resides in Brahmaloka, on the planet of Brahma. Hmm? There he is said to have a thousand heads, thousand arms, thousand thousands of them. Hmm? Uh, this is uh, hmm, described in the Bhagavad Gita in the 13th chapter, 13th or 14th verse. Everywhere are his arms, his legs, his eyes. He, I said the other day, I mentioned that Dwaita had trouble with this verse from the Bhagavatam. I'm thinking it doesn't lend itself that well to a bhakti kind of explanation. Because hmm? in bhakti, he'd be localized in one place, hmm? even though he's everywhere. Brahman is everywhere, but as Bhagwan, he's move, moving at the same time and appears localized. That's very wonderful. Hmm? So in a dream, I think Bhagavan came to him and said, no, you should understand it in this way. Hmm. The verse is saying he's everywhere because everywhere his devotees are making offerings and he's always there accepting them. Any part of the world, there's some devotee and offering something for his eyes, something for his ears, something for his hands, and he's there accepting. Hmm. Hmm. So <laughs> Brahma's getting experience of this verse, as is explained, was explained to way to himself by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in a dream, right? Hmm? And he's seeing Krishna with his friends actually eating, whereas in, 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 in Brahmaloka, well, the Yogna Purusha is there, all constantly sacrifices are being offered while he's awake, sacrifices, sacrifices. And through the sacrificial language and ritual and so forth, he's eating. But the plate always comes back full. Hmm? <laughs> so, He's eating through sacrifice. He's eating the, with the, the spirit of their offering, hmm? right? But here, what Brahm is see, seeing, as will be described, well, it's described here, this is what he's going to see. He's actually eating, and the plate's coming back half empty. In fact, what's happening is these boys are eating, hmm? and they're feeding the Yagya book, who... Now appears with one head and two arms, three booj, and he's like a little boy. Hmm? And they're looking in their bag and they're tasting it. And they're make, tasting something, thing. oh, that's really good. Before they swallow it, put it on Krishna's tongue. Hmm? You now something else tastes, hmm, that's pretty good too. Not quite as good. Give that to a friend. Next, that's not quite as good. I'll eat that. Hmm? And each boy is doing that. And so it results in what any boy passes, he thinks is, is, is a little better, goes to the next, and so everybody, th every, everything is the best. Mm -hmm. And Krishna is tasting all of these things mm -hmm. through the tongues of all of the, of the devotees, and they're putting it, they're putting it in his mouth. And then he's taking it, yeah, that's pretty good. And my bag, what you showed in my ears, cooked for me. Here, you taste, and he's pat and Brahma's seeing this, and the Yagya Bukh is acting like this and he, he, he's not sure he can put that together. Is that what's really happening here? Hmm? Yeah. So as you can see, he's coming to Krishna's too, Bhagavan Swayam, that the Yagi book is coming out of Krishna. He only partially eats, Krishna fully eats hmm? completely. Hmm? So this is, this is the cause of Brahma's beginning of his bewilderment. I mean, he heard, Okay, this guy got liberated. That's pretty far out. Are you sure about that? How'd that happen? And then he comes in, and then then it's, it becomes even more questionable. It was done by Krishna, and this is him. I mean, I met Krishna. 
I thought he was the avatar of Narayan, appearing to me in a particular form. Hmm? I didn't know he had a whole world of his own, his own leelas, sweetness, and so forth, that overtakes even his, his own knowing of himself, so to speak. Hmm? So he's coming into a very perplexing, bewildering theological reality we call uh, the, the prem, a form of the prem that is the prayogen of Gaudi Rush, and it'll be the prayogen, the prayogen of Brahma too. So with that, we end this section. Srimad Bhagavatam ke jai, Krishna Balaram ke jai, or Bhakta Vrinda ke jai. Any question? Yes. I was wondering, I still can't quite grasp when you say that inside of their Madhurya, they're looking at Krishna and he thinks that Krishna is looking at them. Is Aishwarya they're experiencing Aishwarya first time? But no, no. The Aishwarya is that Krishna has expanded himself such that he's actually sitting behind every in front of every boy but no boy can see him sitting next to any other boy and each boy thinks he's sitting next to me now if you're outside of that looking at that you're going to think what the heck that's pretty extraordinary aishvarya krishna has expanded himself into so many forms like chaitanya mahaprabhu expanded himself into four different forms and wouldn't you think that was pretty majestic pretty Extraordinary, hmm? right? If you saw that, I'm asking you. Yeah, but is that Brahma who's experiencing it, or the boys? The boys are, are experiencing it from their praying. They're not experiencing that Krishna's that did this. Hmm? They, it would be ineffective if he did it. If they if they understood it, it would be ineffective. Hmm? Because the effect he wanted to create was to show them, I love you the most, which is true for all of them. He wanted to show that. So to do that, his Aishvarya Shakti assisted him. But, the, but no, the boys didn't know. Each of them felt the same. I think he loves me. I think you're both right. Okay. But they didn't see this. Hmm? Now, did Brahma see it? Well, no. I would say Brahma didn't see it either. Hmm? But Sugadev is telling us about it. it so this happens this kind of Aishvarya arising out of the praying. This is other example is there, of course, the obvious example is the Rasalila. Krishna expanded himself to, with each, to dance with each gopi. Each gopi thought Krishna's dancing with me. Mm -hmm. If they knew, oh, he's with everyone, <laughs> then it wouldn't, wouldn't work. So the Aishvarya is, is there in Braj. Mm -hmm. It's an aspect, as I say, of Krishna. I've explained it in many ways. Does that help? Yeah, so they're not experiencing it, but they're sort of like in the experience in the Aishwarya. Yeah, they're in the experience, and they're experiencing what Krishna wanted them to experience, what he wanted to accomplish by the Aishwarya. And that's part of the Aishwarya. That he was there, and then, that he expanded in front of everyone, and that's Aishwarya. And that no one knew that he did. That says Aishwarya as well, the Aishwarya and Shakti. Hmm? Any questions? Yes, Maharaj. This one question here from Maharaj. So he's asking, uh, if the basis of friendship is equality, in what sense the Gopas discriminated that this preparation is best, so I give it to Krishna? The equality is between Krishna and themselves. Hmm? It's not that they think everything is all equal. They don't think that, they don't think that uh, water is equal to to, to, to dirt uh, or rocks are equal to trees or one cup of food is equal to another. It's all the same. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. That seems to be what your question is arising out of. Hmm? Their equality is equals can share in confidence. They have the same experience. Hmm? I'm experiencing the same as you. We're friends. So they think that there's equality between themselves and Krishna. Now they think at the same time, yeah, but you know, Krishna's the son of a king. We'll give him that. You know, I'm not the son of the king, but he is. We'll give him some deference in, in that regard, uh, formally, but we're equal. But they don't think puris are equal to sweet rice. 
or they don't think they, they, so they have some some think sweet rice is better than puris some think puris mixed stuffed with sweet rice are the best <laughs> but maybe i didn't understand the question did i that's yeah, like why should Krishna have the better one if we are? Yeah. Why should Krishna what? Have the better, have the better, better one if we are equal. And they make a difference between the quality of the preparations if we are, they were equal, and they gave Krishna the best, and they take himself not the best. There was some difference, right? Oh, they're not equal, and they have the equal tastes. Is that what you mean? No. <laughs> the idea of this is the best and this is not the best, so I give the best to Krishna. So that kind of creates a difference. They love him. He's their best friend. <laughs> They're giving to themselves. He, he, you know, they, they think he, he's the extension of myself. They, he thinks they're the extension of myself. So it's like I have one tongue, but actually each coward boy has two tongues. So if it tastes good on this tongue, let me give it to the other tongue as well. And Krishna has one tongue and many, many tongues, right? Another question? Yes. Last week you were talking about Dragas and how the coward boys wanted to enter into the mouth, the snake or the cave, and Krishna didn't really want them to enter, but the will of them, the desire of the coward boys over vice Krishna's will. And I was wondering if this is more of a rule or an exception that the devotees desire will be. It's more the rule. Krishna is subordinate to the will of his devotees. Therefore, if you are blessed in such a way as to develop a, a particular type of prem, then Krishna, your, your will be to serve Krishna in that way. Krishna will be forced by your will to give you a form that corresponds with that and a role in his leela. Krishna is controlled by bhakti. Devotees are personification of his bhakti. So this is this this we find in Golok. You're not going to find that in the same measure in Vaikuntha, but to some extent. Another question. I was thinking when we were talking about the Kaka Lila and how sometimes the Pindav enter to develop Kata and I was thinking in connection to how um, a lot of uh, Sarkas consider the view of Nikrasiddhas. And they say if the view is a Nikrasiddha, that one will become in touch with those higher developments. And so you could say, well, if those are Nikrasiddhas, then the necessity of I suppose someone could argue like that, but I don't think that um, it holds up that well because the, um, the guru is in a sadhaka deha, not in the, 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 um, um, a, a body that corresponds with his herbab in the leela and conducting themselves in that way. So how you're going to conduct yourself in a sadhaka deha it's going to be different than how you conduct yourself in the citadea. And so it's the way one conducts oneself in the citadea and having direct experience of that in the context of the Leela that one would um, gain through that association, that type of intensity. And for that matter, if your guru is a Nitisiddha, he teaches you, like Rupa Goswami did, that you should take birth in a Prakat Leela. Now, there's something to be said uh, to think of the guru as a nityasiddha. Sometimes this was an emphasis in Gaudiya Mak because the guru is a representative of Krishna and Krishna is a siddha, but um, uh, we should think, we should not, uh, we should not think that the nityasiddha is more perfect than the sadhana siddha for that matter. Siddha means Siddha, and Prabhupada emphasized that point. Um, and indeed, uh, it's not that somebody makes an argument in Bhagavad Bhagavatamrita that the, the Sadhana Siddha is better because his love's been tested. 
in relation to Prahlad. So this is, this is just an argument to make so that we don't think a sadhana siddha is somehow less than a nitya siddha. And while some disciples may think their guru is a nitya siddha, I haven't found too many gurus that thought they were nitya siddhas. Let's take Prabhupada, for example. Uh, you know, most of his disciples think he's a nitya siddha, but whenever he was asked, he repeatedly explained himself as a sadhana siddha, as did Bhakti Vinod Thakur, as did Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, but it really, it's just academic argument because siddha means cooked, ready, it's prepared, edible. Mm -hmm. What else? Another question? All right, we'll stop there. Let's see, see.